Have you heard of Hercules' legendary struggle with the Hydra, a many-headed monster? That struggle symbolizes the adversity of worldly desires. Hercules tried to kill the Hydra by cutting off her heads, but every time he cut one off, to grow back in its place. This is the nature of desires. When we try to get rid of them, they don't only grow back, but they also multiply. We need desires. Without desires, we turn into couch potatoes. Desires arouse consciousness out of inertia into activity. Desires are one of those things we can't live with and can't live without. But we can get on top of the matter and getting desires under control. The tarot card strength illustrates control over the desire nature. It shows a woman taming a red lion. The lion symbolizes wild desires. Unlike lion tamers, the woman does not control the lion with fear and punishment. The woman bridles the lion with a wreath of roses that has the form of the number 8. The roses symbolize love and the number 8 symbolizes rhythmic repetition, i.e. positive habits. The wreath of roses symbolizes the habit of doing things in the name of love. Using love as a motivation is life-changing. There is a huge difference between desiring a partner because one feels lonely and desiring a partner because one wants to love somebody. There is a huge difference between having the ambition to become a politician because one wants to be famous or wanting to become a politician to make the world a better place. The latter is motivated by love for mankind. The woman in the tower card has her hands in the lion's mouth. She makes the lion speak. This symbolizes the need to understand our desires and where they come from. The roots of desires are motivations. Motivations can turn into different desires. For example, the motivation to be safe can turn into the desire to take protective measures or to attack those we feel threatened by. Nations can join the United Nations or participate in the arms race. If we know the motivation behind the desire, we can dissolve it and give it a new, lovely form. We do so by asking the right question. What would love desire? The legend of Hercules and the Hydra illustrates the understanding of motivations. The Hydra's head symbolizes desires and the neck symbolizes motivations. Hercules managed to kill the Hydra by severing its heads and cauterizing the necks with a torch. This symbolizes the purification of desires and motivations. The tower card, the tower, illustrates purification. The lightning destroys the tower of separate thinking and false thoughts and selfish desires. The tower is associated with Mars, which gives the lion in the tower card strength its red color. Mind that the tower is also associated with the mouth as an organ of speech. Netzach is the highest personality sphere. Desires control thoughts, that's Hod. Thoughts and desires control the mind, that's Yesod. And the mind controls the body, that's Malkuth. If we evolve our desires, our thoughts and minds and bodies evolve too. These are the four principal types of desires. First, sensual desires. Second, emotional desires. Third, creative desires. And fourth, aspiration. Let's have a look at how we can evolve them. Sensual and emotional desires are worldly desires. We copy them from experience. Sensual desires correspond to the five senses. That's seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, and smelling. Consumerism aims at satisfying sensual desires. Emotional desires fulfill, fulfill emotional needs, like the need to have company. Sometimes we want to enjoy negative emotions. If we feel like getting scared, 
you go bungee jumping or watch a horror movie. Consumerism aims at satisfying emotional desires too. Technology enhances consumerism. Technology escalated the temptation of sensual and emotional desires and chains people to the work consuming sleep cycle. We can't evolve worldly desires. We can only get rid of them. We do so by fulfilling them. And that's what life is for. We experience all sort of things and situations until we get bored and move on. Having said that, we should not satisfy worldly desires on the expense of other people. That brings bad karma. If we want to fulfill desires without bothering others, we need to get creative. The creative fulfillment of worldly desires is our first experience in creative desiring and the first step towards evolving Netzach. This is the trick. Look for win-win situations. Ask yourself who else can profit from the realization of my desires? Or how do I need to formulate desires so that others can profit from what I'm trying to accomplish? Mind that consumerism, i.e. desires for possessions, personal power, authority, fame or prominence are tainted with the ego's illusion of separateness. And that leads to contraction. If you want to expand and evolve, you need to get creative. Creative desires are responses to intentions flowing down from Tifereth into Netzach. Netzach turns cosmic intention into personal desires. Getting creative is life-changing. It takes us out of consumerism to a creative lifestyle and the pursuit of our heart's desire and enlightenment. The mother of all intentions is the intention to evolve experiences. All desires are an expression of the intention to have greater and more fulfilling experiences. But Tifereth has also a humanitarian agenda and it is always looking for creative channels and co-creators. For this reason, we want to develop our intuition, our uplink to Tifereth. This way, we don't only open up to cosmic intention and become more creative. Success also comes more easily. When we fulfill cosmic intentions, the higher self will help us along the way. Let's have a look at the technicalities. The path that connects Tifereth and Netzach is the 24th path, the imaginative intelligence. All desires are products of imagination. Evolving our desires means evolving our ability to imagine. There are two types of imagination. One is automatic, the other is self-conscious. Experience arrive in Netzach through the 29th path, the moon, and trigger Netzach's automatic imagination. Automatic imagination can be a pain. For instance, traumatic experiences cause rumination. When we experience something traumatic, our mind produces all sorts of fear-based imaginations. Depending on how traumatic the experience is, it may take hours, if not days, to stop the mind dwelling on negative imaginations. Examples of self-conscious creative imagination are visual meditations. As we know well, those are hard to master. The fluctuations of our minds continuously distract us from our visualizations and sabotage our focus. But visual meditation is the key to the great work and enlightenment. When we succeed in visual meditation, we can use the 29th path, the corporeal intelligence, to modify our body. Through this path and creative imagination, we influence bodybuilding faculties. That's how the great work works. Aspiration. The highest form of desiring is aspiration. Aspiration means to desire enlightenment. Pursuing enlightenment distills all desires into aspirations. 
In order to aspire, we need to minimize distractions. That necessitates to fulfill worldly desires to a certain extent. Souls need to grow old before they can begin with enlightenment. Temptations of wealth, fame, excitement, romance and power repeat themselves on every enlightenment level. Each enlightenment level tests our strength anew. The path of return has 400 steps. That means 400 tests. The tower card of tests and trials is temperance. The angel in the picture is the higher self, which tests and tempers our thinking and feeling. Tifereth is the sphere of the higher self. Three paths proceeds from it. The first path is the 24th path, the imaginative intelligence. Through the imaginative intelligence, the higher self makes its intention known and evolves Netzach, desires. The second path is the 25th path. This is the intelligence of tests and trials through which the higher self balances Netzach and hold. The third path is the 26th path, the renewing intelligence, which connects Tifereth and Hold. This path renews our understanding of experiences, in particular adverse experiences. Thank you for watching this episode of Between the Pillars. Please help to spread the light with a like and a share. And don't forget to subscribe. Love and light.